Yo, what is going on everyone? MTAS here, and the Inazuma hype is real. There's actually a new diary that posted. They showed the weapon banner, which it's the weapon banner. I'm never going to hype that up. But they also officially showed off the Ayaka banner. However, in-game, there's also some patch notes available, so I'm going to go over this all right now. Great timing. I just got on. I was going to go edit a different video, but uh, it is time for Inazuma. So they talk about the reputation system, gameplay, oh my god, we got a whole bunch of stuff. So let's get into the juicy stuff first, let's talk about the banner. Now, the banner banner, uh, the character banner, this one is interesting. I'm going to talk about some pros and some cons here. I see some major pros, I'm going to talk about some synergies, but I'm also going to talk about some cons. And I know that it might tilt some people, but I don't personally love this banner. Um, actually, seeing this banner officially, I know 100% I will not wish on this banner. Now, I'm really low on Primo Gems, uh, I have my, my 5 star pity available, so I could get Ayaka, but I personally don't want Ning Wong, uh, Yanfei, or Shang Yun. However, for some people, this is a god banner. Some people love Ning Wong, and they can get constellations hopefully, and they love Ayaka. So I mean, you're winning right there. If you get some Yanfei, you get Shang Yun, it is what it is. But my only worry, and the reason I bring it up is, it's kind of a DPS-focused banner. We've got Ayaka, a greedy DPS in Yanfei. We've got Ning Wong, who's another DPS. And then we've got Shang Yun, who is a pretty average support. I don't think people are running Shang Yun in all the comps in the game. And, you know, he's, he's not a mastermind. That being said, Ning Wong is god tier. So if you get a bunch of her and uh, you build her out, she's going to be great. Maybe you need some constellations for Yanfei. That's cool. But the thing with Shang Yun that, that maybe people are sleeping on is Shang Yun is one of the only characters in the game that boosts attack speed. So that's a bonus. Also, able to turn Ayaka's basic attacks into cryo. So if you're building a bunch of cryo damage with a cryo cup, that means you're actually going to hit really hard with your basic type attacks. It also means that if you're throwing someone like a Shang Ling in, you can get a bunch of different melts or reverse melts. Uh, you can maybe do some freeze comps. There's some different synergies you can go here. So it's not the end-all be-all. It's not the, the worst. It's just not my favorite banner. But I think some people are going to be really hyped here. And I'd love to know in the comment section below, are you hyped for the banner? Are you really excited, more excited than you were, or less excited? I, I don't know. Now, the other thing, too, is in the Inazuma Diaries, uh, they just showed off a couple different things. Look at this. Did you see that attack? Let's just watch that one more time. Uh, sheesh! <laughs> That's a nice-looking... Uh, tag, we got some AoE sending out those electric swords. Awesome. Can't wait. So that's one of the first time uh, that I've seen any of the Electro main character attack. So that is really, really cool. I'm glad that they showed that off kind of, you know, before everything launched. So Electro main character, new attack, elite. Uh, and then they were just talking about some of the plant life that you're going to be able to find. Uh, some different, some trees. You're, these are going to be used for cooking, different, uh, different specialties. Also showing off that there is some different wood from the trees that you're going to get for um, kind of new blueprints in your player owned house or your Serena teapot, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but that's pretty much all that's in here. Nothing too big. Now let's get into the patch notes because there's some juicy stuff inside. Okay, so patch notes, 300 Primo Gems. We all love that. Uh, but also, Inazuma confirmed 2.0, we know this, but in order to get there, you need to be rank 30, and you have to have this quest done. Chapter 2, Act 1, The Immovable God and the Eternal Ethemia. Or Ethemia. Uh, make sure that quest is done, or apparently you can't go to in uh, Inazuma, so make sure that's done. Uh, they talk about the Sacred Sakura, so this is going to be a tree, uh, or, or a, new, um, a new system, where you take Electro Sigils from chests or quests or wherever you're getting all of them, and you, you level up the tree, right? And you're going to gain some bonuses. It says valuable items. There is rumors that there's a bunch of wishes in here. So that's amazing. And uh, also some enhanced abilities on your Electro Granum, which I don't actually know what that tool is yet. Oh, what's this? The Electro Granum? These miraculous spirits are called Electro Grana. They spawn from under the Sakura boughs and grant the protection of Electro. Uh, there's a reputation system as well. Uh, with certain NPCs in Inazuma. So there's going to be a whole reputation system here if you want to get different wings for your character, which I know I'm excited about. Make sure you do your bounties, and make sure you don't do your bounties uh, when they reset on Monday, okay, tomorrow, or else you're not going to be able to do this when the new region launches. So save your bounties and your reputation stuff for the next day. They talk about the Thunder Sakura bow. Uh, you pick this up, you get a buff, kind of like the Crimson uh, a Gate in, in, in Dragon Spine, I think, to take out Thunder Barriers and all these things. Uh, until this is in-game, I don't want to really, you know, talk about it too much. 
We know some of this stuff is coming. There's bail thunder. This is high electro levels. If you're going into it, you're going to gradually lose HP. This is to stop you from exploring or make you take alternative routes, whatever. But it says here, if you use the electro grana, it will protect yourself from the harmful, uh, the harmful effects. So you might have to wade through a pool of electro to get from one area uh, to a next. So that's pretty cool. Um, I'm not going to get into all that stuff until you know we can actually see it. But there's going to be some chess quests and puzzles. You stuff. Now, there's also like 700 new domains, domain of mastery, domain of blessing, a domain of empty boats, because there's just a bunch of empty boats you can get there. Uh, <laughs> there's like a whole bunch of these. These are for the new talent books. These are for some upgrade materials, and these are for the artifacts. So that's going to be pretty cool. Uh, there's Ayaka. They're talking about Ayaka and what she does, just like a little, a little breakdown of her weapon and who this is. That's cool. We've got Sayu. We've got the Electro Traveler confirmed. Fantastic. Can't wait. Uh, we've got all the new equipment. It's not showing any of the stats here. You can find them online if you really want, but they're just talking about the uh, weapons being added, the artifacts, and some new events, which if you watch the, um, the, the announcement, you kind of know. New world quests. Now look at this. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, fifty. There's a lot of quests. And uh, a lot of these are really quick. Some of them will maybe give some primo gems. Some of them just give you some rewards, but there are new quests coming. And then there is uh, all these different enemies, which I actually talked about in a video just the other day. Add it. Now look at this, the new special wish mechanic. This is for the weapon banner. Again, still hundreds of dollars if you want to wish on that system. Uh, the Adventurer's Handbook, you're going to get some commission quests in the new region, and, or in the new region, but you're going to be able to select which region you want to do them, which is cool. Uh, there's some new gadgets, which you know, we kind of have to talk about when they're in game. Uh, but there's the artifacts. I don't know what's called synthesizer. You trade in artifacts from one type, you can get some of the other. Uh, but it only works for particular artifacts. Um, the Wanderer's Troop, the uh, Gladiator's Finale, the Bloodstained, and the No. So that's pretty cool. And then, um, I don't know. This is just all like food items being added. Some new achievements, we know that. Some new name cards from doing the events, cool. Uh, some new animals, sweet. But look at this, Spiral Abyss, updated monster lineup, 9 to 12 Spiral Abyss, baby! Ooh! There's also going to be a ley line disorder of a plasma field that will be generated at the edge of the challenge once the challenge begins. While within the field, characters will be hit by lightning every 5 seconds and take electro damage. The area covered by the field will gradually expand as the challenge proceeds. So, if you're not going fast, it's going to get real spicy. Uh, there's another one on floor 10. The leader, uh, there will be a leader amongst the opponents present each floor. Its attendants will also be present to provide it enhancements and protection. Each attendant will increase the elemental resistance and physical resistance by one or by 10%. It will also restore the leader's HP. So you actually need to kill all the mobs uh, or else they're going to heal up and, and tank up that boss, which is really interesting. So if you've got like a venti who can suck them up and chunk them, that's going to be pretty cool. Uh, Leyline, look at this one. Pyro damage dealt by all members increased by 60%. Cryo damage uh, by all party members increased by 60%. So, <laughs> Pyro and Cryo are about to end floor 11 in three seconds. So, <laughs> get ready for that. That's going to be the easiest floor we've ever seen. Uh, and then we've got energy tides present on the fourth floor. Uh, that will switch between high tide and low tide. This is actually interesting. During high tide, a large amount of particles will be generated when a character attacks uh, an opponent, restoring 10 elemental energy. On low tide, all characters in the party cannot gain elemental energy. So you're going to have waves of elemental, uh, elemental energy and waves where you're absolutely sapped dry. So uh, really interesting how this is going to play out. I don't know if it's going to matter too, too much. Uh, I think it's going to be fine to deal with that. And uh, I'm excited to try it out. Then we've also got, uh, there's like another buff you get depending on the Spiral Abyss. This one says when an active character's elemental energy is fully charged, the defensive opponents hit by the character's normal charge and plunge attacks will decrease by 7%. So you can actually reduce their defenses by using just kind of all your attacks, which is cool. But that's only when you have full elemental energy. But honestly, that's not too bad. You can debuff them really quickly and then swap over and use your big uh, elemental bursts. And then we've got another one here when an active... Uh, character gets an elemental orb or particle you will then do a shockwave of damage so if you're generating a bunch of energy you're going to get some boosts of damage and then this last one here is 
Uh, when you use an elemental burst, the attack of the party is going to get increased by 20%. So that's pretty cool. You can stack it three times, get a bunch of damage. We've got some audio stuff, system stuff. Um, I didn't see anything else in here, really. Some kind of quality of life stuff. You can do some more map pins. But um, yeah, it didn't really go over any like buffs or nerfs uh, that I saw. Maybe they'll post that in another one. I, maybe they just don't have any. But that's pretty much it for me. I hope I covered everything. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you soon, my friends. Bye-bye.